Well, hello everyone. Today is Friday, November 19th, 2021, and this is episode number four in my crochet series. And I'm going to be telling you all about my Granny Square project that I'm doing, which is a afghan or a blanket, whichever you want to call it. And also about how I keep things in my crochet bags and what I do and how I you know, load up for projects and things like that. I've had a lot of questions about that. So I thought I would talk about that first in this video. So um, they kind of all go together. So I'll just um, tell you a little bit about the Afghan right now. So I've already shown you how I do my granny squares in um, my series and that is in episode number one in the crochet series. And so this is what I have going so far. Okay, let me move these out of the way. This is folded over. So I have three rows so far on my afghan and I'm going to be showing you how I join the rows together. I mean the squares together to make a row and then how I join the row onto my onto my afghan. But let me talk about first about my bags and things like that and my containers and what I do. So First of all, the first container that you saw in the video, this is one of my project tins. Sorry for the noise. But this is what I keep my floss flowers in, okay? And this is what I have my leftovers from a skein of my chunky thread. When I have a little bit left over, but it's too much to throw away, but I can't do a whole outside round of a granny square or whatever, I wind them here on my floss flowers because even this amount, you can do a center row in a granny square very easily. So in my first um, video, I showed you all of these, you know, how to make a granny square. This is a two round, three round, and oh, that was thrown in there, a bonus four round one. And here's a four round, you know, and they just keep getting bigger. So it's just the same way that you make them. They just keep getting bigger with each round. But what I'm saying is all of these little rounds right here, I could probably easily get most of these. I could get one or two rounds out of all of these. And so I just save them all. And then when it becomes too, you know, too small of an amount to, um, save, then I, I I don't throw them away. You can throw them away, but I don't. Let me show you what I do. Let me grab in this, this bag right here, what I've got going. So in this bag, I've got one of my jars here and I keep all the little leftover threads in here and because they're 100% cotton, and I've probably told you this before on videos. I maybe told you this in my episode number three, which was my crocheted flowers. But I use these leftovers for um, spreading outside in the springtime um, in my yard around by the bird feeder and stuff because the birds can use this for their nests because it's a natural fiber. So you would do that only with like 100% cottons or 100% linen or something like that and that won't hurt the birds and it really helps them to build their nests. And so that's, that's what I do with the leftovers and um, when it gets bigger than this jar, then I'll just transfer it into a bigger bag and, you know, start putting it uh, downstairs um, by, by the door that goes outside. And then we have them in the spring. So that's what that's for. And um, so I like to have a project bag that kind of holds all of my, all of my yarns and all of my different things. So here's a big one that I've been using for quite a while. I got this I don't know, a couple years ago, and it's supposed to be for like a sewing machine bag. So we'll see how it kind of has a zipper in the front and things like that, but it's a pretty big bag. You can see that I usually use it for my featherweights, but in here, it, I like it because it has a zipper that goes all the way down on the sides. And then I usually just, this is what I keep by my chair usually, and to, or in my trailer when I go to go in my trailer and crochet. So I have my yarns, you know, I have a pair of my readers. I always have a notebook in here so that I can write my notes on, you know, patterns and crocheting. And then I always have a clipboard in here and then I can clip the patterns or things, patterns I've copied off 
or PDFs or anything, crochet patterns. I have my knitting mushrooms in here. This will be coming out next year in the spring. This is my vintage knitting mushroom and I'll be showing you tutorials on that. That's fun. But anyway, so I have this, this holds quite a bit and especially because I can open it. Then I have my yarns here and then I have other bags that I can just kind of set inside like this. This is my crochet bowl. I bought this at Hobby Lobby and painted that and distressed it a little bit. And then I can set another bag in there and I can even set my project. And then finally, let me put the lid back on this. I can set this inside this way. And that's just what I have going on right now. You know, sometimes I switch my bags around. Sometimes I use a bigger basket, but I can have kind of been using this because I've been camping and I usually just grab this and I'll just take it and close the zippers on the sides as much as I can. But I like to have a big bag that has separate smaller compartments, not compartments, smaller project bags inside of them so that, um, you know, I can separate what I have going on as far as, let me show you what's here inside my prim bag. So this is my prim mesh bag here. I've got my little phone charm on here. When I say it, it reminds me to call my mom. <laughs> And so what I have in here is specifically for the project that I have going now, okay? So I've got, let me show you. And then I can keep them nice and stacked. On this um, afghan, I'm doing 12 across on these rows. And so I have these in stacks of 12, so I know how many rows. So here's the granny squares that I have made a bunch of them. I have some in a jar too, but I just throw some in a bag. I still have to weave in the ends. Okay. So this is what my grannies look like. I like to make one or two grannies every morning and just to keep me going on this project. It's relaxing to me. It wakes me up and I, you know, I just spend 30 minutes crocheting in the morning and I get one or two squares done. Now here's a stack of 12 that I have ready to go that are already woven in. Okay. And so what I do next with that is I have two stacks of 12 here and then I put my fifth row on. So I make a bunch of four round grannies, just like I showed you in my first video. And then I add a fifth row all in the same matching yarns. And so what I'm doing, let me kind of put this in a little bit. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Can you see that, sis? Okay, so here's my chunky thread in linen color, okay? It's in linen, it tells you the color back here. And that's what I'm using to put my fifth round and then to join all of my grannies together for my blanket. So I've got one row here ready to put together, another row here ready to put together. This one needs the fifth round on these and then I need to weave in these ends, which I showed you how in my episode number one with my grannies. And then this one, I've got a row already joined together. See, it's doubled. So there's 12 of them ready to go on. So I'll show you how to do that at the very end, but um, I'll show you how to join my squares together first to make a row and then how to put on my blanket. But as far as yarn goes, um, I grabbed seven of these skeins just to get started at this point right here to get this much done. Um, just so that I can keep track of how many skeins it's going to take to finish my afghan so that I can let you know. And I just always keep a notebook in my stuff so I can keep track of things like that. But um, so far I grabbed seven and then wound them to look like this, wound seven of them. And so that's how I keep track if they're wound. When I say wound, this is something my granddaughter Sophie loves to do when she comes over. So this is a vintage yarn winder. It just looks like this. You could probably still find them if you searched, but it just hooks to your, it clamps to the end of your table and you take your skeins of yarn 
and um, it winds them into this shape right here. And it just makes it easier. Let me show you what the lid of this box looks like. I don't know if you found a vintage one, if it would look like that, but this one says wool winder. But this is something that I've always used and I think these were maybe made, I don't know, in the 60s or something because of the color, but this is something that I've always used and still love to use today. And like I say, my granddaughter likes to wind them. I happened to be in the trailer with this chunky thread this summer. And so my husband wound a bunch of these for me. And like I say, I wound seven so far so I could keep track. I knew that if they were, once I used all of these up in this color that were already wound that I had used seven. So this is what I have left right now from seven skeins of my linen. So. I've used, used it for two rows on the outside. I've used it for another row on the outside and joining, and then I've used it for three rows and I still have this. So I'm always keeping track when I use all of these seven, I will write down exactly how many, you know, rows or squares or whatever I've edged with it so I can kind of keep track. So that's what I do with my notebooks. And so that's what I keep in that zipper bag, I'm always just finding different bags to put different things in. And speaking of bags, I wanted to show you, I do have my um, panel coming out in time for our granny square along that we're having it that starts in June. Okay. And here is my panel right here for just a crochet bag, which looks like this, a virtual kind of mock-up of it. And then here's the small one for the hook, and this is the crochet hook bag, and this comes all on one panel. So while I was testing the size and everything, this is being printed now, and it will be out, you know, first of the year, after the first of the year. I'm not sure which month, but I think April, you know, around there is when we're expecting it. And so I took the measurements just wanting to make sure that all of that was going to be right and I mocked up this bag right here. So this is the size. Here, let me let me put it face down so you can see. You see all of that whole thing. Okay, so this is the size it's going to be after you put the gusset in, see in the bottom put the gusset in there so that you can put my skeins going across like this and it's got a handle on it so you can just grab it and this one has a top zipper on it what's kind of fun about the top zipper is I did two different prints for this for the front and the back and so really there's really no front or back because it's a top zipper all you do is now it's the front right and then you turn it around this way and the handles on the other side and Flip your charms over and this is the front so i put this charm on this bag because this looks like my grandma my crochet grandma <laughs> my dad's mom who um, is italian and this is uh what she looked like and so i want to put it on here because she's the one who taught me to crochet when i was six and of course this is one of cassidy's um, keychains that she has done the tutorial for in my episode number three but anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you the size of the bag of what it's going to look like on the panel. I just used my decorator weights um, just to kind of test it out. And I put batting in this one. In the instructions, it's with just a lining and the front, which is fine. But um, I'll show you the inside of that in a minute. But uh, there's also the crochet hook bag. And this is the size that that's going to be. Now, this is one without batting in it but this is the exact same size it's going to be and this just has lining so I've used the same fabric to line it and the same fabric for the front and so this is for your crochet hooks and things like that so that's what that looks like and it's pretty good and sturdy with both fabrics so there's four of the decorator weight thicknesses so inside the bag this is what I keep in here and this is in preparation for our granny square along in June. I have, um, well, I always have a thing of my readers in there. But this is the prototype that I did for the crochet hooks bag right here. This one's quilted as well. 
and I always like to keep a smaller bag inside my larger bag because in the larger bag I keep my yarn and the smaller one I like to keep things separate like so here I've got my notes I've got um, all three of my crochet hooks speaking of my crochet hooks have been in and out meaning they sell out as fast as they come in but we've got some new ones coming in um, the end of this month or the first of next month that's what they look like these are the 100% cute crochet hooks that work work with my yarn and I'll be using this one but what I do I keep scissors in here and now and then I keep my um, thing of yarn needles and that's really all you need to do this whole afghan blanket you know besides the yarn but that's what I keep in there I'm just gonna leave that hook out and then inside the bag right now I've got 12 skeins and so it just fits four across really nicely and then three rows but I could easily put another row in there and still put my little zippy bags in there but I wanted to have room that I could actually put you know the granny squares to stack them as this is kind of an on-the-go bag so that when I get home or back from camping then I can put these you know in my larger bags and things like that so it's just kind of all about uh, project tins bags and all that kind of stuff that I put in you know different containers and then I have a large place that I put them all together all right so that's about my storage told you about my kind of yarn and what I'm doing and I'm just doing very very scrappy like I like to do so far I've got um I'm using the 26 colors that are now available but we've got six more coming here in June in time for the granny square long and so then I'll be adding those in but um so what I do Let's get right back to joining these together now that you know all about my bags and storage and info and all that stuff. So what I do is just the old fashioned way of joining these together, how my grandma always taught me. And I know there's all different ways that you can do this, but all I can do is just show you the way I do it. There's really no right or wrong way. This way makes sense to me as a quilter. I just take the squares and I join them together one square at a time into rows like this. And then I add the row on to the bigger afghan. So I just, you know, that's just kind of how I do it. So what I'm gonna do is set this row aside and bring this one in just so I can kind of show you. Let's see, sis, do you wanna fold that up a little bit? neater like that with the right sides out so we can I can have that to show so I've got my yarn in here and I'm just going to use a single crochet stitch to join these together now this is the same way that I join my when I showed you in episode number two how I joined the two pillows together when I did a tutorial on my granny square pin cushions for um, Kimberly on the Fat Quarter Shop channel. I showed how to join those together to make, you know, a little pillow. So this is the same way. I like to use a single crochet. Now, when you use a single crochet, it ends up having a ridge right here. Can you kind of see side, side view, you kind of have a ridge. You can either choose to have that on the front side or have that on the back side. And I've done it both ways and I like it. And you can also even do an accent color, like you could do these all in cloud or, you know, all in denim color or whatever. But I'm choosing to use um, my linen color in everything. And so for this one, what I do is I grab two squares. If I want the ridge on the back side like this, then I'll put my squares right sides together okay like that if I wanted the ridge to show on the front then I would put my squares wrong sides together like this and go ahead and join them and then my ridge would be on the outside 
So that's just a personal choice. I really like both of them. It just doesn't matter. I just did my last pillow um, with the ridge on the outside, the one with aqua that I showed you, I have shown you before a few times on my channel for different videos that I made for my trailer and that the ridge is on the outside. So I thought this one might be kind of fun to have the ridge on the inside. And so let me just show you how I do that and then how I leave in the ends. All right, so we're gonna get set up to do this to make sure that we can see, hang on. All right, so is that about right if I crochet there? Okay, so I'm just, I have them right sides together because I want the ridge to be on the back and I'm just going to do a single crochet. So I just start out, you know, like you, like I've shown you before in the granny square, how I put my yarn on the hook. And I'm going to start by doing a single crochet in this big hole and this big hole. I'm just gonna put my needle through there and begin joining them together with a single crochet. So what that is, I'm just gonna leave my tail hanging so that it's out of the way. I'm gonna put my hook through the big holes, grab my yarn, okay, so that I have two loops there and then grab and wrap my yarn and go through both loops. That's a single crochet. Okay, so I've just joined them in the corner there. And now what I'm going to do is, because there are, on these grannies, there's three stitches on top, three stitches on top, three, you know, it goes three, three, three. I'm just gonna join them up, meaning I'm gonna put my hook in the top of the chain of these I gotta do this far away so you guys can see. But you wanna go ahead and put your hook in both of those, not just one, but you're grabbing both, okay? And then you're gonna go, This I'm making this look more awkward than it really is just because I want you to see exactly where I'm putting the hook. But in the top of this first stitch right here, there's a little chain. So now this is what it looks like in the top, okay? I already had my loop on of yarn for my hook, but now I've gone through two and two because of the chain there on both top stitches that match up. Now I'll just do a single crochet, meaning I just grab my yarn through, wrap it around, and go through both of those, okay? And now I just continue on that one, the next one, and I'm just lining up, and this is how you know that your stitches are always lining up because your granny squares are the same amount of stitches all the way around. And so I know I've got the third one to do on this one, third one to do on that one. Just go through, grab my yarn, come back, go through both of them. Now, because I didn't chain in between, on my grannies, I do not chain in between here. Okay, so I just have three to do here, three to do here, three to do here three to do here, and then I'll do one in the corners here to join. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this slowly so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. And sis, let me know if I need to get in a better view of the camera. Okay, so I'm just doing that. This is number three on both sides, just going along. And I know I talked about the right and wrong side of a square and how to tell the difference of your granny squares because a lot of people at this point, when I teach them in person, when I say put right sides together or wrong sides together, they're like, well, I don't know, you know, which is which. Well, when you have crocheted, you know, several granny squares, then you start to tell the difference. But if you're a beginner, it may be hard to tell. But let me just stop right here for a minute and show you how I can tell. This is the wrong side of a granny square. And this is the right side. Okay, if these are both in view, I'll kind of explain. So see how this looks um, like the work is flat more, like it should have more dimension. This one, the chains show up on the top, more of your work shows kind of more in the front. That's just the best way I can 
explain it. So see the difference in, let's see, one color that they have in common here is this beehive that I've used. See, so this is the exact same stitch, three double crochets, but this is the back side of three double crochets. That's what that looks like. And this is what the front side of three double crochets looks like. So I hope that helps if you're trying to tell the difference between a front and a back. Okay, so I've got the third stitch in that cluster left to do. Now I've got three more. And then the corner. I'm trying not to be too, too wiggly but uh, doing this far away is a little bit challenging. I really like joining my squares together and then my rows together. It's, it's easy and it's re relaxing and I like lining up those stitches. Okay, so now I've just, I've done the corner, I've done the top of all of these and now I'm just gonna do the corner again by finishing it off how I started going through both of those holes coming up and doing a single crochet. Okay, so now I've joined those two together. This is also something you can use the little bits of yarn left over if you have. I just use those up first because this isn't a very long thing, um, you know, to do. And so I'll just pull up like I've shown you before. Let me grab my scissors I have here in my bag. And I like to cut so that I have, you know, a six inch tail, seven inch tail, I'll show you, I'll show you why. So I just pull that up through the loop, just how I've shown you before, and pull down tight, okay? So this is what it looks like from the front. Okay, I've got two right sides there, and this is what it looks like from the back. So that's what I mean about the ridge. So now I normally would just keep going like this, and I would go 12 across or, you know, join two of them, two of them, two of them, two of them, and then, you know, keep joining them together. So once I have a row like this, before it's ready to go on to the afghan, then I need to weave in my ends. And so what I do with that, let me show you what I do with that. So I just grab one of my yarn needles. They come in this little tube here for nice keeping. And I like these, these are lightweight, they're blunt, but they have a big eye, so it's very easy to thread them. So what I'm gonna do is, on this one, I'm going to weave in the ends on this side, and then this one, I'm gonna weave the ends in on this side. And how I do that is, on this side, you can see where the top of my chain is, the ridge, on the sides of those chains, I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle, start weaving like this. I usually start by putting my needle in first before I thread it. And then I like to just put that through there, pull it through. I kind of pinch it here so it's not gonna come unthread it and I just continue. And for these, when I'm joining squares together for a blanket or an afghan, I like to go all the way to the other end. I think it adds stability. And see, then I'll just pull it out like that and it's kind of squished up together and I just, I don't pull it out real tight, but I'll just kind of straighten it back out straight. I'll take this and I'll just cut it right there. And you can't see that from the front, but there's an extra thing of yarn there in between those rows that kind of helps that. And then I'll just turn around. I usually go ahead with the whole row of 12 and do all one side first, and then I'll go down and do, you know, the other side. So now I wove this one into this side, so I'm gonna weave this one into this side, and I just do the same thing. I just go ahead and start like that. And then just continue on. I probably should have grabbed my readers out since I'm doing this far away so I can kind of see better, but I can feel kind of what I'm doing. Okay, I have one more little set here. There we go. Okay, so I've pulled all that all the way through, straightened it out just a little bit, and then I go ahead and clip on that end, clip off the end. I'm gonna put these in my jar for the birds. 
So that's what that's going to look like. Okay, so that's how you join those squares together into a row like this. I am gonna go ahead and put my readers on for this so that I can see what's happening. So when I'm ready to add a row, and again, this probably is just the quilter in me. There's all different ways to do it, but let me tell you, my grandma did it like this for years, her sisters, my mom, her sisters, and it works great. And I just kind of like to do old school this way. So I have the three rows that I have so far like this, and I haven't let me turn it so I can show you these. I need to weave these ends in, but I'll probably do that after I have the whole afghan done, and then I'll be doing more borders with this um, linen color, and probably pick some of the colors out here and do some more things around the borders. But of course, I'm gonna keep you updated on what I'm doing in case you wanna make one with me so that you can see what I'm doing. So I just wanna make sure this is all in camera. And what I'll do is lay the rows out like this and just kind of make sure that I'm not, I like how what's joining together. Like I might not do it this way because these two are too much of the same color. But, you know, that's not going to really bother me that much. But I just kind of like to have my choices on what looks the best when I'm lining things up. So far, I think they all look pretty good. I kind of just like to, my rule is I don't like the outside row. Like if this one right here was, was my Riley red, then I probably wouldn't put those together. I'd probably, you know, go on the other side or something like that. But so far I'm not seeing any thing. Yeah, I think those look good. Okay. So now I know this is the end that I'm going to do it on. If I didn't like this a lot, then I might, you know, audition it for this other side. But I like this. So because I want my ridges on the back, see how my ridges are continuing to be on the back. My ridges are on the back from joining them together. Now they're going to be on the back this way. Then I'm going to put right sides together. And because I'm right-handed, I'm going to be starting on the right and working towards the left. But if you're left-handed, you would want to start, you know, I'm thinking from, I'm not left-handed, so I can't say, although my husband is, but he doesn't crochet, so I guess I can't ask him, but he's he's actually ambidextrous. He's, he's left and righty. Then you would start from this end and work towards the left. But, um, so I just have right sides together and I'm just going to join them in the exact same way that I showed you how to join the squares together, starting in a hole here and then just the three, three, joining the three stitches, the three stitches, three stitches. And then when I get to these corner holes, I'm gonna do the same thing. One single crochet to join those two and I'm just gonna skip right over there and start with the next one, one single crochet and this is how they that looks like in the intersections in the corners. See how that cute little design that it forms? And I like that. Okay. Now, I've shown you in video one how to block my granny squares for different projects that you're doing. Um, that's always a personal choice. This, these, for this project, um, particularly, I decided not to block because when I finished doing this, I'm just gonna throw it over the love seat and use it here in my sewing room or take it out to my trailer and it will be washed over and over again, which takes the blocking out. I just don't find it necessary, but that's just kind of my personal choice. So when I do wash mine, I wash mine, it's 100% cotton, so I wash it in um, cold water. And then I put it in the dryer for kind of a little bit so it's not super duper wet. And then I will take it out when it's about halfway dry and I will lay it out on a bed or a floor or something like that, or even out on my, on my deck, you know, sweep my deck clean or whatever, my patio and lay it out there and then just kind of shape it that way. So kind of blocking it with my hands, I guess, and just let it dry um, 
like that. And so that's how I wash mine. All right, so let me grab that. And these yarn bowls are really nice. And I like how after you wind them, see how that twists like that. Now, if you can't find a vintage yarn winder, I just wanted to show you what I use. I'm, I'm sure there's other yarn winders there out on the market, you know, that you can buy. It's a common thing to buy skeins of yarn and then wind them into um, cones or, you know, what, whatever they call them to, um, you know, to make it easier to spin in your yarn bowls. Okay, so let me get set up here. And I'm just gonna chat with you a little bit as I start doing this. And um, then I'll just keep doing it to the end of the row, but I'll probably just, I won't speed up, but I'll just, you know, have Cass put the music on or something like that so that you can watch me do the entire row. So there's my single crochet to join my first two. And I'm just gonna go into the top two here. That's the top of the second double crochet. Here's the top of the third double crochets. And the only way you really can get off here is just by not matching up your the tops of your three double crochets but I like to keep it open like this and I just put it in the first one first and so I can see the front of the second ones and it actually goes along pretty good. Now when I'm doing this I try to keep my tension even meaning I don't try to do it really loose on purpose and I don't you know try to do it really tight. Now, if you, everybody's different in their tension and how they do things. When you're joining your rows together, it's easy to kind of go like this and do it really tight. I'm gonna take that out because I don't want it that tight. If you keep doing that and you're having a hard time with your tension and so you feel like it's taking you a long time, this is when the next size of a crochet hook would be really nice um, to use. Let me just show you these. Okay, so this pink one, let me grab my back of my package just so I can tell you. Here's the hooks. This pink one is the smallest one. And see, it shows you the colors, what they are. This is an E4 in US. That's the pink one is an E4. This is a G6 in US, which is the next size up. And this one skips up to a seven US. And this is when I use this one when I'm doing two at the same time. Okay, so see two, when I'm using two strands at the same time, which is what I do when I do, um, you know, like wash dishcloths or um, face cloths or anything like that. If you want me to show you how, what I do, how I make some dishcloths and my face cloths and things like that with this hook, if you want me to do a tutorial on that in this series, just let me know and in the comments and I will do that. In my next episode, I'll show you how I do um, a dishcloth if you want. But if you're worried about your tension and you feel like it's getting too tight, just for joining the rows, you may want to grab this hook, okay? And just use a bigger size hook, which automatically gives you a bigger stitch, a little bit bigger stitch. But if you decide to do that, Use, moving up to that size hook just to join the rows, then I would make sure that you continue doing that, you know, when joining them all so that all the stitches, you know, look the same and are uniform. But, you know, just face it, we're not trying to win any prizes with this. We're just trying to have fun. We're just trying to, you know, crochet a blanket and have fun and relax and play with all these happy colors of yarn. And, you know, sometimes we overwhelm ourselves and get too critical of ourselves and you know am I doing this right am I doing this wrong and I'm definitely not showing you the only way to make a granny square blanket but this is how my grandma taught me and so that's all I can do is show you what I've been taught and what I've done my whole life which has worked out great for me 
And so that's all I can do. Okay, so I wanted to point this out. This is where my, um, where I, how do I wanna say that? Where my thread ended, where I joined, you know, my ended my granny square here. And so this looks like a little knot, which it really isn't a, a knot. It's just where I ended. So the two threads went behind here and I wove in with the needle, but it just looks, the top of the stitch looks kind of weird. And so I just want to explain to you what I do when I get to that. There's usually a little hole right there that you can get your hip, your hook into, which that was fine. But if you can't get your hook into that, just go into, just go into that hole itself. Go into the top of the stitch here and the hole here, and it's all gonna work out the same. Just as long as it has the even stitches, you're just joining the blanket. And again, it's not, you know, anything that you're going to be judged on. We really only judge ourselves, right? And uh, sometimes we can get too judgy on our own <laughs> work and just, you know, relax with it and just have fun. And, and uh, each time we make a project, we get better and better and we're more and more relaxed. And, you know, it's all gonna work out. It all works out good. And there's no right or wrong way really to do anything once you get the stitches down you know you're good to go so now i'm starting on the second square here and i'm just going to continue on and i'll chat with you again once we get to the end
All right, so I've got this one. Last one to join up here in the corner. What did I do with my scissors? Cut that off. Pull it through the loop. You know, I just love this when I do stuff like this that grandma taught me. It just makes me think about her every time. My crochet grandma. And then my other one was my quilting grandma. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Yay, I've got four rows so far. I'm not sure how, it, you know, if I did 12 rows, because I did 12 across, that would be square. And let me grab my measuring tape. This. Remember my little um, crochet flower tutorial? I put it on my measuring tape. But let's measure just so I can tell you. So this measures 16 inches right now. So that means that each of these are four inches. Okay. So what's four times 12 is 48. So that means I have this across is 48 measures, 48 inches, 12 across, but that's with just these together. Meaning, like I told you, I'm gonna be doing a cute little border and probably end up scalloping it, you know, on the outside with some, you know, few. So I'm just thinking something like, I don't know, that'd probably add, you know, two and a half to three inches on each side. So I don't know maybe a 54 inch width, and then you can just keep going as tall as you want, depending on what you're gonna do. I'm gonna do more than 12 by 12, I think, just so that I want it longer, so that I can actually use it for, you know, to throw over my legs and things like that for when it's very cozy and cold here in the winter time. But anyway, so I wanted to show you real time how I joined a row just so that you could kind of see exactly how long it takes. If you don't wanna watch the whole row, obviously you can fast forward until the end. Um, or if you just wanna crochet with me, then you can watch the whole thing at the same time. And also I wanted to let you know, I can't remember if I've told you this or not, but there is a way that you can watch YouTube videos slow motion. Just look in your settings there. And you can actually turn it on to slow motion if you actually want to see me stitching slower so you can see exactly, you know, where, where I'm putting the yarn and things like that. So um, that's my tutorial and my chat for today. And so I hope that you have enjoyed my episode number four in my crochet series. Please let me know um, if you'd like me to show you how I do a dishcloth and use my larger hook here and use two skeins at the same time. And thanks for joining me. I always love spending time with you in my sewing room and I appreciate your support. I appreciate your wonderful comments and I appreciate this community. And so again, thank you so much and I'll chat with you later.